Hello everyone and welcome to Wervent World and welcome to part 2 of my combat tutorial on Endless Legend. Today I would like to show you how to order your units around so that they actually do what you would like them to do. Um, so previously we went into what all the statistics uh, meant and what this mora morale wheel here means and all that. Uh, and today I would like to show you how to move them around. So basically what you can do in combat is for example you can move your unit. So if I click on a unit and then right click somewhere else it will move there. You can also attack a unit. So if I right click on a unit, uh, enemy unit, you will see this red arrow appearing and that means that it will try and find a way to attack that unit. Um, you can also uh, do a couple of other things. You can hold some hotkeys which are not explained in the game as far as I know uh, which are actually fairly useful. For example, if I would just move here uh, out of itself the unit would just find any of these uh, after it has moved it would find a target by itself however I can also specify which target to attack by basically giving an order Q and to do that is uh, you have to hold control so let's say I want to move there uh, I want to move there and now I hold control and right click this enemy and then it will first move there and then attack that one I can also for example move here and attack that enemy so that you do with holding control. So first you right click somewhere and then you hold control. So that's uh, a bit of an advanced ordering thing you can do. Um, another pretty important thing to do is moving inside each other's hexes. And I can show you how that works. Um, basically, let's say, let's check the initiative order first. This one is first. Okay, so let's say this one would move here for no reason then the second one would like to move into that uh, thing. So I can right click this hex and you will see what happens later. Um, now I will choose this one and I hold Alt while right clicking this one. Yes. So now you actually see an arrow appearing. So with this one I just did right click and with that one I did holding Alt and right click until the arrow appeared. So first uh, it's this one's turn. This one will move away. Now this one I right click there, but it doesn't do anything. It actually just starts attacking the enemies. So that could be super confusing. Uh, so that's actually what the alt button is for. So the alt button allows me to um, basically say move into a occupied square basically. Let's wait for the combat to end. Yeah, so those were the two buttons that are very, very useful to know. So basically you can use control to give complex orders, so uh, such as first move, then hold control, right click, uh, and I attack. Um, so it's kind of like an order queue. But you can uh, also use alt in order to move into another hex, as long as that hex will be uh, empty by the time it's this turn. And as you can see, now it actually wouldn't be, because uh, these guys here, these guys satyrs or something um, they're lost in the initiative line so basically this ranger wants to go in there but it's not empty yet and that is where another th a layer of this, this endless combat uh, comes into place and those are the strategies so what strategies mean are basically um, things our order should do uh, sorry things our unit should do if they cannot uh, follow up on the order we actually gave them. So for example this one cannot move into that square so what should it do then? Um, well that's actually uh, given then by these strategies and you have offensive, defensive as well as um, hold position and they all do different things. Offensive will make the unit um, search out an enemy. Um, hold position will um, make the unit just stay on the same hex and then if there happens to be a unit in range it will attack that unit. Then um, there is defensive and defensive I just basically say don't use it because it's extremely unreliable you never really know what they're going to do. Sometimes they seem to run away from the enemy sometimes they seem to get closer to their own units in order to maybe get a morale bonus or something but it's extremely unreliable no idea what exactly their decision making process is there while with offensive and uh, hold position it's extremely easy basically hold position is just well stay there and offensive is search out an enemy 
So that's very easy. So I actually um, reorganized the units a little bit now um, to make the example more clear. So I will put everybody to attack this orc here. But the thing is, uh, this orc has 72 hit points. My archers do 29 damage. So my archers are first. They will all shoot at this orc, thus doing 3 times 29 damage, maybe some critical hits as well. So the orc will definitely die. Then it's the orc's turn, but it's dead. And then it's my hero's turn, and he was also set to attack this orc. Um, now I have it on um, offensive, so let's see what happens. First my rangers attack. Then it's the orcs, they will move closer. And this one isn't in range, because it only has a range of 3. Um, first these guys attack. So, but it's on offensive, so now it will move closer by and then start attacking. So let's do that battle again, but put her on, um, or him on hold position. So I just reload it. Again, everything is attacking this orc, and this one is now on hold position instead of on offensive. Um, but it wants to attack this orc, but it will be dead. So let's see what happens this time. Shooting again. All dead. Now it's his orc moving and attacking this one. And now this one is in hold position. So it actually doesn't do anything at all. And this one will heal. So that's how uh, offense and hold position work. Um, one additional thing uh, is support units. Um, they can attack. So they have an attack value, but as you can see, they're really, really bad at it. They only have an attack of 27, which means it has a 12% chance for a critical hit, 61% chance for a normal one, 20% chance for half damage, and 7% chance to miss completely. Uh, so they're not best suited for that. However, they also have a support skill, and in this case, uh, for this unit, the support skill is heal, which means it can heal a unit. Um, it will normally search for a unit uh, to heal by itself, as you can as you did see in the last turn, it just healed this one because it was the only one that had damage. But you can override that order by right-clicking on a unit and then you will see a green arrow. And the green arrow will basically mean support that unit with whatever support spell you have. Uh, in this case, a heal spell. Um, so, yeah, that is a basic overview on how uh, to order your units around uh, so that they actually do what you want them to do. Um, this comes especially handy, especially when um, units die before uh, one of your units can still attack them, and then you have to set the order. Of course, you can try to calculate uh, using the damage and the life values uh, on exactly what to do, but of course, when you, once you start dealing with chances to miss and stuff, that's not always uh, super reliable, and then you have to rely on either offensive or uh, hold position. So again, uh, offensive will search for an enemy, hold position will just remain where they are, but still attack a unit if it's in range. U uh, units will always attack if something is in range. And uh, then there's defensive, which you basically just shouldn't use because it's very unreliable and we don't know exactly uh, what the decision-making process is there. So I hope you find it useful and see you next time.